My name is Tyler Watts. I am the Transgender Outreach Director for Kentucky Quality Federation. I am 37 years old. Today is May 1st, 2011. We are in Whitesburg, Kentucky. I am interviewing a longtime friend of mine, Shannon Ratliff. Uh, we've known each other for 27 years. And um, I guess we're going to get right to the questions. All right. Okay. Oh, my name is Shannon Ratliff, and I am. Um, uh, I work at Eastern Kentucky University. I'm a human resources analyst, and uh, I was recently named uh, ambassador of goodwill by the um, Kentucky Equality Federation, and uh, I'm here as part of the uh, StoryCorps and Kentucky Equality Federation's focus on growing up uh, gay or transgendered in, in Appalachia. All right. Well, Shannon, I guess first uh, we should talk about what brought you to StoryCorps today. Uh, do you mind just giving a brief brief explanation of that? Well, I, I got to StoryCorps uh, through the Kentucky Equality Federation. I met uh, Jordan Palmer, who's the president of the foundation, actually through you, and um, heard that you were doing StoryCorps and uh, thought we'd make a good pair for the interview. So here we go. Perfect. Um, well, you and I met when we were actually in elementary school, uh, Hyman Elementary. You were in the fifth grade. I was in sixth. That means we've known each other for 27 years, which also means <laughs> that you have gotten old. <laughs> but we've we've talked before about how we were each each the first non-straight woman the other had ever met. Do you remember knowing? that I wasn't straight? I didn't have the vocabulary to know that what straight or not straight was, but I knew you were, um, you were like me somehow, and and I definitely think that was a, a connection that, th that made us friends from, from that point on, and even though it was never spoken, I think it was, it was definitely something that, that drew us together. Okay, well, why do you think it's important to talk about your experience of being gay and growing up here in the mountains in southeastern Kentucky? Uh, well, I think language is very powerful, and if you speak something, it makes it real. And the one thing that I remember most about growing up uh, in the mountains, as far as, as being gay was concerned, was that there was no, well, like I said earlier, we had no language for it. We had no idea what that was, and um, it's very difficult to identify yourself when you don't know there's an option for you, and and, and anyway, so if you if you speak something, it's real, and, and I think that speaking it uh, maybe will make it real for for some people who, who can't speak it just yet. Finding your voice is the most important thing, and some people are in a position where they can use that voice. I happen to be in that position because I have a supportive family, I have a supportive community. I don't have any buddy waiting to, to uh, take anything away from me if I use my voice. So <laughs> whether it sounds pretty or not, here, here I go using it. <laughs> well, what do you think of when you think of the mountains and, and back home? Um, I, I think of beauty and green and the way summer smells. I think of my family and, uh, in my past, and potatoes frying in an iron skillet full of lard, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and vegetable gardens, and, and my grandmother, and uh, canning corn, and, and canning beans, and I think of quilts made by family members I never met, and um, of the clothing of family members I never met, and uh, I think of always having somebody there to, to help or or, or just someone, you know, uh, always being around the corner. And I think of coal dust covering everything and baptisms and creeks and old regular Baptist preachers telling you you're, you're going to burn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think of, uh, uh, as I was saying earlier, uh, the skeletons of, of dead trees in winter and bare feet and dirty faces and poverty and love and hate and cemeteries on mountains and <laughs> yeah. good and bad yeah yeah can you can you talk a little bit more about 
now that you gave that list of things that you think about from your past, can you talk a little bit about your childhood, how that was like? Uh, sure. I, I grew up in a, a family that was very, very close, still is very, very close. Um, grandparents right across the street, uh, aunts and uncles right behind them, aunts and uncles right beside, right, right down the street. And uh, right down the other street. <laughs> and right around the curb and where the old oak tree was. And um, it always reminds me, actually, of... Uh, it's very tribal, a, a very close-knit group, almost communal uh, in some ways. There, There's always, like I said, there's always somebody around. That that can be a good thing. That can be a bad thing. <laughs> uh, you you lose your sense of anonymity in that. and um, And you gain maybe more perspective than you can handle <laughs> that at one time that way. <laughs> uh, but my childhood, I, I was very close to my family, um, and, and, and I still am very close to my family in, in many, many ways. And um, I, I really, uh, it's just it's just very tight. Um, it's the kind of place, or my family, and, and most of the families I, I knew in the mountains, um, if someone get hurt, gets hurt, the entire the entire tribe goes to the hospital. <laughs> it's that kind of atmosphere, and uh, and and that makes for an interesting way of growing up. It, it's um, it's very it's very much twenty people at breakfast in the morning, and and even more uh, at Christmas dinner, and uh, it's just it's a whole lot of people. If that if that helps any, it was very sheltered in many many ways because of uh, of the mountains and. Um, and yet very supportive at the same time. I'm not sure if there's something specific. <laughs> and so being part of such a tight community, when you realized that you were, quote unquote, different, mm -hmm. um, how did you feel about that? Um, I felt a, a disconnect that um, it, hurt, it hurts my mother to hear those words because she so doesn't want there to be one there and, and neither do I, but... It's a disconnect that isn't. There's nothing she could do about it, no matter how accepting she can be, and uh, or or anybody. It's um, until you have experienced something, you can't fully understand it, no matter what that something is. And there was not until I met T. There was not um, well, and even T wasn't out, but uh, a single gay person that I can remember, a single out gay person that I can remember uh, during our childhood. Uh, during during our lives in East, in Eastern Kentucky, of course, this was 20 years ago, but it was also pre-Ellen. In fact, <laughs> in case you didn't realize that 27 years is a long time to know anybody, to to know how old I really am, it was pre-Melissa Etheridge. Um, <laughs> yes, I am to confirm that even she was a lesbian. So, so yeah, there was just no, there was nobody. <laughs> there's there's no information. Uh, the facts of life and, and uh, different strokes didn't cover that. They were still working on race, so we didn't get to that part yet. Um, Shannon, how do you think living in the mountains actually shaped you the most as a person? Well, I think it, because there was there's no sense of anonymity there, I think it made me value it a great deal. Uh, it made me question uh, everything. <laughs> um, maybe that had nothing to do with the mountains. Maybe I'm just a questioner by nature. <laughs> but you are. Uh, it made <laughs> thanks. <laughs> I don't know how you figured that out. <laughs> but um, but yeah, it made me um, it, want, it made me want to know what else there was, and and the fact that I that I recognized that there was something different about me. Uh, made me want to 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 see if there were others <laughs> right, <laughs> over the mountains right. out of the mountains I, I know I was, I was right there with you it's like it where it was never talked about you know there was absolutely you couldn't figure it out right <clears throat> you know am i on this and planet that's, that's alone a yeah it's a tough thing because you don't know what the, where those feelings are coming from so therefore you don't know which where to turn right. you know there's you, you just you got to do it on your own um did you ever hear like uh, derogatory comments, even in a joking matter, about the um, LBGTI community, like from family, from friends, um, 
you know, when you were younger? Um, well, you know, we had we had one particular friend, uh, our friend Chris. I don't think he would mind me tell, telling who, who yeah, he is exactly. I don't think so either. If I could show a picture, he probably wouldn't mind that either, in truth. Um, <laughs> but he was, um, I always joke because Chris and I were born on the same day, uh, but w within hours of each other. We lived three houses down from each other on Troublesome Creek. And, mm -hmm. uh, he, and I think his mother went into labor a few hours after mine. So we were both born on October 10th, and I'm pretty sure he came out in heels and a tiara. <laughs> and, uh, I think you're right. I'm pretty sure, yeah. So he, um, he sort of just glittered from birth, didn't he? Mm -hmm. He was born with glitter covering yeah. his whole body. Absolutely. But, um, so, it, you know, he was pretty obvious, even though it was never spoken. Um, right. But we, we always joked that something got mixed up in the water. Uh, <laughs> but he um, was obviously very close in proximity, so he was a, a big part of my childhood. And and I you knew my parents would have would have done anything for him to make sure he was safe and, and whatever. But I could tell there was always just a little something. They just didn't, they didn't understand it, so they they snarled. Uh, even if they didn't even realize it maybe, but, mm -hmm. um, there was disdain, uh, when they, uh, when they spoke of his actions, of his behavior, not of him, they loved him, but, but his, his behavior, they, it annoyed them a little bit. It, it scared them because I think yeah. they recognized somewhere what it was going to mean. Yeah. Maybe they recognized somewhere yeah. what it meant for and me that too. That was just unheard of around Oh here. yeah, yeah. That yeah. was, what are we going to do with this little boy? Yeah, Exactly. Exactly. So you actually heard them making comments about him. Was there any kind of name calling or any kind of comments that kind of stuck out in your mind? Well, I remember being with him a few times in uh, in different places and, and hearing people say things, uh, you know, fag or or just the typical mm. what typical statements like that. But um, I think he was more hurt by, of course, what happened at school. That's where all the damage is done. Oh yeah. Um, I don't know if you remember, but he got stuck in lockers, and he yeah, uh, yeah he was he was harassed, and he he faced a lot of things that that we didn't, mm -hmm. um, because men in general just have a hard harder time, I think. Um, but most definitely, yeah, the the reaction that people had to him uh, certainly, well, I would say put a damper on my ability to even face myself you know I'm... exactly that that was my whole point of asking that question because i know me myself have heard <laughs> those same comments and heard name calling and even you know if there was something on tv and someone acted funny or something like that you know the comments would be made and because of that do you feel like that's why no one would even come out to themselves in their own mind afraid of you you know what i'm saying oh like, is, certainly did, did those comments have an effect on how you came out to yourself let alone to other people yeah i think they along with many other things just um somehow created in me uh i i just sort of capped i put a cap on it mm -hmm. i just decided some place in me i don't remember making this decision of course <laughs> But somewhere right. in me, I, I made the decision, I'm not going to deal with this until later when I'm not here, when I'm not around this, because it wasn't even so much about um, gay issues that I heard language I didn't appreciate, <laughs> but I heard right. a lot of uh, racist comments, and mm -hmm. um, I don't know what what caused it, but I can remember being very, very young and hearing racist comments. I didn't know what racism was. May have never even met anybody other than a white person in my life. <laughs> right, right. But I remember feeling stabbed by it and um, losing respect for the people I heard say it repeatedly. Right. I didn't understand fully what it meant. I only knew that there was negativity behind it and certainly not love behind it. Yeah. And um, it, so, it somehow... Uh, that was projected into every other marginal group <laughs> for right, me. Right. Um, if it was uh, a black, if it was about black people, if it was about gay people, if it was about you know any any uh, nationality, any right. back, anything, then um, it was different, and so it was wrong, and 
I decided if I was going to be wrong, I needed to wait until I could. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I could explore that elsewhere. Yeah, and it's not not home and right. not around here. So it, even if I was if I was going to have to come out, I was no, I wasn't going to do it while I was there. So right. Well, I, I guess that kind of answers my next question then, because the, that that question is, did you ever feel uncomfortable within the community, within your family, within the community, at all at any time growing up? I think there's an a constant uh, disease. <laughs> That's not even a word, is it? <laughs> disease. Um, uh, uneasiness, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Okay. Uh, a feeling of of just not quite fitting in it. And again, it's not anything that they could do to make make the fit happen. It's, um, mm-hmm. it's just when you have all these um, I don't know, thoughts, I guess you could call them, <laughs> Um, and you have no nails to hang them on. It, you have no way to compartmentalize them in your in your brain, so you you have a hard time um, making any sense out of it. You know, we right. we humans are are here to try to make sense out of chaos. And if if there's nothing to associate any anything with from the beginning, then it's um, it's mm-hmm. hard to get a good start on that. So right, right. So you were. You were never out while you lived here, right? Were no. You, were you ever out? Mm-mm. And that would be the reason why. Um, when do you remember recognizing your attraction to girls? Um, I remember feeling like uh, if I if if my friends spent the night with me, or uh, and I and I don't remember having any specific attraction to any of them. I know though that that if uh if they changed clothes in front of me, I felt like I needed to divert my eyes because they didn't have Ooh. the opportunity to to make the choice whether they wanted to go go to another room right, um right. and i and I didn't understand that uh, at all. <laughs> mm-hmm. they didn't obviously feel that way i I didn't know <clears throat> why I felt that way, but I certainly right. did but um I remember there was a there was a woman, an actor. I don't know her name, but she had blonde hair, and she was not in any way attracted to me now when I think about her. But for whatever reason, <laughs> I thought I wanted to be her, you know. Right, right. I can't believe I can't remember her. She was a soap opera woman. Not slanding, even. Something. But I I realized later that it wasn't that I wanted to be her so much as I I just be had the her. hots for her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You didn't yeah. want to be her. I can't for the life of me remember her. who she was, either. But, um, but yeah, it I was... I that was again something that just um, I put a I put a mm-hmm. lid on that I didn't explore anything to do with with how I felt about mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. girls then in my life. So when you did have those thoughts that you put a cap on and you, and and you just wanted to close that portion of your your mind out. Um, what was it? What was your life like with your family from that point? You mean when I did come out, or or no, 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 like just you know, just growing up. What was it like with your family, especially after you had those thoughts in your mind and you kind <clears> of <throat> you put a cap on it because out of I guess fear. I just remember on. withdrawing from them a lot. Uh, I remember being uh, depressed. Um, that wasn't a word then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, it was, but it wasn't used, at least not anywhere near me. But um, I remember being in a, a very, very confused and depressed and, um, and without having a clue as to why still. Of course, in my mind, I, even if I could have uh, attached those things, I m- may not have uh, been willing to do so. But in my sp- specific situation, my parents were going through a divorce, and so I'm sure there are a lot of other things that... Um, maybe masked what the real problem was. Right, right. Do you, um, since you never came out um, then, um, do you think your parents had any kind of suspicion or ever suspected you were a lesbian? And and what do you think made them wonder if they did? My poor parents. I don't know how they didn't know from (laughs) the get-go, you know. Um... (laughs) <laughs> when we played, when my when my cousin and I played games, we played uh, detective games, and we had we we were both men in the games. Right. Um. And and I was 
this is all very gen, uh, generalizing, uh, generalizing and stereotyping because I, I bought guns and trucks and things, things like that instead of uh, dolls and whatever <laughs> sparkly yeah, things. Yeah. And um, yeah, I can remember the days of of girls wanting to uh, go school clothes shopping. They couldn't wait to go, and I was like, oh my god. Right, shoot like, me just mm-hmm. go pick something and I will wear it <laughs> right, right. <laughs> or I won't I will be mad because you have chosen something I would never wear in a million years exactly um, and I I remember my mom being frustrated by that and, and you know I remember uh, people buying me purses and jewelry and things that I didn't you know here's the makeup put the makeup on most kids are like mom please let me wear lipstick please right, just, right. not until you're however old not mm-hmm. you. And and my mom was like practically begging me to here, let me put it on for you. And all right, <laughs> right. And you didn't want nothing and to do with that. And poor Chris is down the street begging me to fix my hair. And I... <laughs> <laughs> it's ironic he's a hairdresser. I know. Now, right? He still calls me and says I've got to get there and fix you. <laughs> but um, but yeah, that was. I they had to know. They had to know as far as that goes. And I remember them having little, you know, looking at me a certain way. Or I almost wondered then if they weren't thinking something about me that. Worry, worrisome. Um, yeah. Of course, yeah. Uh, again, I wouldn't have been able to, to verbalize what that was, but that's what it was. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Um, well, speaking of our friend um, Chris, who you've known your whole life, and I've known since um, high school, um, was gay, and he he lived actually a few houses down from you. Mm-hmm. And um, did you think the same way about him as you did me? Like, like out of, uh, uh, was it more of a suspicion or just? It's really hard to talk about with Chris because I, I did know, but I didn't know. It's so uncategorizable because there's, he, I mean, he was just, he was just gay from, <laughs> I mean, right, he, was, right. he was two years old and he was just gay. Mm-hmm, I mean, there's mm-hmm. just nothing. He, very he, feminine, yeah, very feminine. Yeah. And, uh, so, and yet I didn't really think about him. I just thought of him as Chris, you know, I didn't, mm-hmm. I didn't, it's just, it was just part of him. And, and I never really associated what made him different with what made me different somehow. They were mm-hmm. not related in my brain. And maybe I was doing that on purpose so I didn't have to think about it too hard. But, right, right. but I, um, I never really thought about them as being the same thing. Right, right. Not the same either as you. I don't know. <laughs> it was, well, yeah. We're all very different. Well, I mean, all of us, because in the end, we were, um, every single one of us ended up coming out uh, before it was over, and I really didn't. Slowly. Yeah. One at a time. I wasn't, uh, I was never really thinking about anybody except, of course, you and, and the one situation that you were in, mm-hmm. um, because it was so obvious that. Something was going on. But oh, yeah. That's for another, that's a whole nother Oprah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we had a small group of friends, and we were very close, and we still are, actually. Um, we still do the Christmas dinner every year. and Usually and in April. Togethers. Yeah, exactly. And um, But all of us were part of the, of the um, LBGTI community, and we never discussed it back then. And what do you remember thinking about all of us or all of them at at the time? And and why do you think we never, as close as we were as friends, why do you think we never ever told each other? Because we knew that we would accept each other. We knew that uh, it wasn't going to make a difference as far as the um, as it goes with the feelings like we weren't going to turn our backs on each other. Right. Why do you think none of us talked about it? Why do you think we kept that hidden, that double life? Well, we were obviously scared to death of, of, I have no idea what, but, um, I so wish we could go back for just a day. (laughs) I so wish we could just go back for one day and not County Central. Here we come. (laughs) Um, but I don't know. We just, um, I don't know that it, individually any of us were ready to face it for ourselves, so maybe we we just couldn't do it. You would you would think that we would have right. somehow helped each other uh, pull pull it out of our yeah, pull yeah. ourselves out of the closet collectively, mm-hmm. but um, 
no, I think we were we just needed to hover in there together for the time and and figure ourselves out each as individuals so that right, so right. that we could do so that we could do it when we when we left. Exactly. When we, when we all went our separate ways. We just never went our separate ways. We were always right behind each yeah. other. <laughs> we went our separate very ways. Short, we came very back short, very short, yeah, very short periods of time. Swept back in and out. Of um Well, one thing I wanted to ask is like uh, as far as the prom goes, I remember, I remember you did go to prom. Mm-hmm. Um <laughs> and I I'm just wondering on how you felt. Like I would never imagine seeing you in a dress still to my this day. My shoes died to match my beaded gown full length <laughs> gown. How did that how did that make you feel though? I mean and 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 you know, you know how most proms go, you know, whatever date you go with, you know how proms are, you know. How did that go? I mean was Well, I just remember um <laughs> I sort of did it for I did it for my mom and Chris, uh, mostly. Well, I want to, you know, you're supposed to experience the prom, and I thought, here I am. I, I don't have any, who are, you know, what am I supposed to do with these boys? And, mm-hmm. um, but I thought, I, you know, I'm gonna go do the do the prom thing. So I, I did. I just let them go nuts. I picked out the dress and um, spent an entire day. Went to a place uh, to have my nails done and. <laughs> And Chris spent forever on my hair, and um, and then my mother, because basically they just had to take turns. And oh yeah. The neighbors came over. The ants came down from the hills, and uh, um, <laughs> that was a joke about the hills. <laughs> but um, but they did. They came in droves. Everybody, the the, um, the whole the whole fam family, and the, and uh, they were all very excited, and they had the makeup, and yeah, just kind of went through it. Just went through the motions and yeah. went with a friend and and actually we went as a group, um, I think three couples, and only one of the one of the three uh, they were actually were actually a couple. So, um, it was more for the fun of going out and acting, you know, getting dressed up and acting ridiculous. Right. If so, I could, if so, I would go back now, I would wear a tux. Right, right. Uh, like, did you something. feel uncomfortable in that dress? Were oh, you, miserable. Um... I was miserable in that dress. <laughs> right, right. I was not comfortable. I, I, I wish imagine. I could say I wasn't. I really don't want to be such a typical dyke, but uh, <laughs> necessarily. But uh, but I just was miserable <laughs> in that dress. What did, what did the dress look like? Well, the first year, I went two times, junior and senior year, just like, you know, you're supposed to. <laughs> and... um. The first year, I can't remember which one came first and, and second. I know that one year, Shannon and I had the same well, I had a friend named Shannon, oddly enough, and uh, and um, we had the same dress, didn't we? Was I'm pretty sure. Unplanned. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> uh, she was going with her 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 real life boyfriend, and um, he would he would not be happy with this, but he wore white socks. But anyway, <laughs> um. But anyway, uh, yeah, the one one dress was uh, kind of a blue green, what is it like a teal kind of color with with silver and white sparkly stuff on the front, mm-hmm. uh, and they were both beaded, and that was the thing then, in the in the nineties, in the early nineties, and um, and the other one was black with a very similar, <laughs> it was just like the bluish one except it was black. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> it was an eighth more comfortable than the blue one. Um, but anyway, yeah. So there was my my fancy smancy prom dress. Oh yeah. Well, one of the most vivid memories I have of us when we were kids is we used to dance around in your room singing Whitney Houston, that whole entire album. <laughs> and the Pointer Sisters. <laughs> Into your bedposts. Those oh, yeah. were our microphones. Uh-huh. We broke the bedposts. We did. We did. Um, we would spend hours doing that, and you had pictures hanging all over your bedroom of boy celebrities, like I remember Kirk Cameron, and I actually even remember you making a comment about Kirk Cameron, saying how hot you thought he was. And um, I do not remember that comment, let it be known. I do remember that very vividly. And Johnny Depp was on your walls. Um, 
Well, <laughs> sorry. Uh, you you never. You know your express... interviews after mine, and you're in. You're yeah, in I know. I'm sure. <laughs> well, you never expressed any interest in like reality boys. It was always like the celebrity boys, or anything like that. And and since I wondered about you being a lesbian, kinda at the time, just because of the interest, the tomboyish. Um, and because of my own inner feelings about myself, so I wondered, you know, were you like me, or, you know, and um, I wondered a little then, and I've wondered even more as an adult, that what made you hang those pictures? <laughs> I mean, what what made you pretend to be attracted to those celebrity boys, but yet in real life, there were none? Right. <laughs> well, I don't know what was happening with the Kirk Cameron. <laughs> I think I just picked, you know, he was in there a lot, so he must have been right to hang on the wall. Um, right, right. He must have been the one that was I was supposed to hang on the wall. <laughs> oh, that was Little Gage, really. Little did you know at that time right, just eh? how against homosexuals That's that right. boy was that you seemed to like. So he probably well. would have jumped right off my wall. <laughs> um, yeah, the and the Haim brothers, Corey's, the, not brothers, but the Haim Corey's. Or the I two mean, Corey's. the Corey's, yeah. Haim and what's his name? Corey Haim and Corey Feldman. Feldman, Feldman. Yeah. Um, they were I think just... I you had them on your walls, too. I did, two. I did. I just picked them. I just picked them out of the magazine. And Now, Johnny Depp's a whole different Oprah, too. He's very special. <laughs> He's very special. Johnny Depp makes me understand why the Kinsey scale exists. <laughs> He's the reason I can't be whichever number is the, <laughs> the locked-in uh, homo because... Mm, right, right. Because he might be the that most should beautiful be flattering. human being. That should be flattering to him. Well, yeah, it should. Don't you think mm -hmm. you should call me right now? We should talk about it. <laughs> um, but yeah, Johnny Depp was, was supposed to be on my wall. He might still be on my wall as far as you know. But, yeah, um, right. You don't let me But go the others were just often. chosen. They were just part of, well, that's what I was supposed to do. So, I don't know. I was playing my part. <laughs> 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 I tried to stick to musicians mostly that it didn't matter. Right, but right. I did have those boys on there too. So it wasn't for a cover up. Yeah, I guess it was. I mean, I didn't know that it was. I didn't know that I was covering up. I just. I, so you literally. Like, okay. So you literally were attracted. To no, them? no. <laughs> was, it was just was, the show right. or whatever they I did that you liked. The situation yeah, yeah. had nothing to do with looks or exactly. anything like that. Got exactly. you. Got you. Um. Well, I know. <laughs> hey, I know you had a sibling. You know, you have a sister and. When you finally, and and even your parents, mm -hmm. per se, when you finally did come out, how did you come out, and what were the reactions? I was 23-ish, I think, and I started dating somebody, um, and so I told my sister first, and my sister told my dad. That's how, that's how my parents found out. <laughs> that's you what sisters what are for. <laughs> I was, I've never been able to trust her. But um, Shame on you, Amber. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but that's pretty much how they found out. And I, and I didn't, um, I had only, I've been uh, dating this girl for a while. And we we were living together. Um, and so I was thinking, how am I going to tell them? How am I going to tell them? How am I going to tell them? And then my dad calls me at work. Well, sis, Amber tells me. <laughs> <laughs> um, he was very, I think he was hurt that I didn't tell him more than anything. He was, uh, that was his biggest problem, I think, was that I had just hidden it from him and didn't feel like I could talk to him about it. But Yeah, um, kind of felt deceitful to him. Yeah. Like, you, like yeah. you didn't trust him enough. Right, you know? right. I think that was a big part of it. But my dad has been, uh, he has concerns of, you know, Every father does, I guess, and every mother does. It. Um, but he, he's he's worried. But he has, um, for the most part, been. Uh, he's a spokesperson. <laughs> he could be. Yeah, yeah. He could. I think he should meet up with Ellen's mom. Um, <laughs> he's uh, he's yeah. He's flying his his rainbow flag uh, in his heart, and and he. Um, and yet, you tell me that I remind you. Well, of I've your dad discovered so recently much. that you are my father. In, in uh, a previous life, I'm sure there's so many Freudian things wrong with that. I don't want to go into it, but <laughs> but my dad, um, 
he's a great he's been very very supportive and uh i've I've noticed that and that that was kind of what i was wondering is if um as supportive as he is now you know any anything i've ever seen posted on facebook that you have uh you know this whole um story core that we're doing um you know and the herald leader that right. was covering the story core um you know i always saw like I'm proud of you, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. th- I'm, I'm happy that you're standing up for yourself and I, I love you, you know, um, was it always like that from, from the start? It was always, he was always supportive and proud, most definitely. He, um, he did have some transitional, mo- you know, it was, it was never a matter of him being, um, you know, angry or, or mm-hmm. hateful or, or or anything like that, but I, it took a second for him just to adjust, I think, right, and for him to learn about uh, uh, what that means, what it means to have a, a lesbian daughter. Right, uh, I was the m- most he had ever been exposed to it, so he had to to learn, and he and he did. He actively learned, read things, and and um, what about your mom? M- my mom is um, also hugely supportive. I think she's had a little more difficult time um, than my dad. Uh, she is more worried, um, mm. more uh, afraid of what, um, of everything, <laughs> what society will do, of, of God and everything. So, <laughs> but 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 she's also also always been very supportive. Right, right. So, as as the community mm-hmm. in Appalachia, mm-hmm. you know, is it been more? negatively other than your family as far as growing up in Appalachia the whole point of it do you feel that it was more negative things um and that's why everyone hit it so much because it was so you can't speak of this you can't I think do it's that. really more fear than it is um anything else because there was no teachings of it we, right. we didn't you know this is stuff you figured out spoken, on your own right yeah, so there was no, uh, it wasn't so much that there was anything negative, it was just silent. Mm-hmm. And and so, uh, well, like I said, in, unless something's spoken, it isn't real. So if they didn't want to speak it, they didn't want it to be real. Right, right. And so it was more of a matter of, uh, from the community at least, we just, we don't speak of this. This is shameful, so we yeah, don't speak of yeah. this. And it, and it's not that they said it's shameful, it's just that that is built into the silence. And, um, mm-hmm. and so it's not so much that I heard anything negative, just nothing. <laughs> right, right, right. right. So basically, to sum everything up, what would you say to a gay person or a lesbian or or someone transgender growing up in the mountains now? What what would be your message to them? What would you say to them? Um, you being the ambassador of the Kentucky Equality Federation as well, um, because you know nowadays isn't back isn't like back when we were kids you right, know, right. there's a, a lot place. of kids that are committing suicide today and it's not just in the in the mountains right oh no but it happens there too and um you know well to what, anybody what would be the message to any child who who is beginning is wondering about their own sexual identity i would say um to focus on who they are as a person overall regardless of their sexuality just to focus on on who they are as a person overall and to, to, to just try to act out of love and, um, remember that they're going to get away from it and, and to try to get away from it. And I'm not saying that to, to try to create, um, those disconnects between families, but, I, but I think that it's important to actively seek, uh, everything that life has to offer outside what you know, when you know, Mm-hmm. that what you've been surrounded by isn't quite right for you. So um, it doesn't mean that what you're surrounded by is wrong. It just means that, that you need to take the opportunity to to seek outside it. Go to school. Yeah, right, right. Well, um, is there any kind of contact information that you would like for anybody that's having problems, any kind of troubles? Um, I would have no problems with, uh, or... with people. I don't, I don't would have no problems with people contacting me. Uh, at sbradliff at gmail dot com, if you want, or um, the um, or the or through the federation site. Yeah, you should give that uh, information because I'm going to get it correctly. I think it's the uh, www dot kentuckyequalityfederation dot com. Okay, right. 
And if I'm not mistaken, everyone's email is kind of like intertwined with that. So it will end up. It'll go to everybody who yeah, needs it. Yeah, it, it'll get sent even if it's your Gmail account. It'll and Once it goes to the Federation, it gets forwarded on. To okay. Your, so um, oh, I guess that, that sums it up. And All right. I'm so glad that we got to have this conversation and share the story with everybody. And I hope it gives some information to those confused and and um, just hope it helps. I too. Thanks. It's fun. Dorks. <laughs>